bruisende strijd op vlees en jolijn. Kom laat ons nu winkelen op ons gelden pad. If you can do that, if you can mark your 2,5 by 1 inch piece of shim metal in perfect quarters, you can identify five key points on this metal. Where these three short lines meet the edge are key points, and where two of these sh short lines meet the long middle line. Those are your other two points. If you have those five key points identified, you connect them up into a slightly curved letter M. That is the magic letter M that you see so many of us cutting out of the metal with our scissors when we fabricate these shims on the fly. The biggest tip I prefer to give, and it's something you don't see everyone recommending, I say steer clear of the rudimentary and lazy chomp, 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 four cut technique. Take the time, be diligent enough, to make one long, smooth and continuous cut. Especially paying attention to making it curved around all the corners. Cuts that meet each other at a sharp point or angle are potential areas of weakness for your shim. There's spots where it could snag, there's spots where it could tear. Curved cuts distribute the stresses and the loads a little more effectively and will make this resistant to some crumbling or breakage. Once you have your letter M cut out, recall these lines you drew during the, down the long axis. Those now become folding points. Starting with the top line, fold right there with the edge coming to the middle. Now all that remains are these little wing bits, which you can just fold up and around. Get them out of the way. Some people might want to cut them off. I say there's no need. Leave it on, give it a little more robustness, a little more heft. If you have a pen or a marker still laying around, you can try to work this into shape. If you don't, that's no problem. Any lock you're going to try to open, a lock where you don't have the helpful sticker on the back and you've lost the combination, you're going to be able to work that into shape directly on the shackle. Nothing wrong with that technique at all. When you try this, first of all, it's helpful to know where the shackle is being retained. Simple cheap combination locks like these, as you look at the dial, it's almost always on the left side only. The right side, nothing happening there. If you're not sure, pull up as hard as you can on the shackle. It'll still have a little bit of play in this side over here because there is no notch holding it in place. This left side, however, when you're under tension, not a lot of play, not a lot of wiggle room. That tells me something is holding it tight and fast on that. So, by means of the use of two shims, you can sometimes effectively open locks with two sides that latch the shackle in place. Now why this gets interesting with the beer can solution is that those conventional store-bought shims that I told you about, they're not only made of steel to make them stronger, they're also fabricated more thickly to also make them stronger. Now that added thickness usually isn't a problem on a one-sided shim attack. Attacking both sides of a padlock, where you don't have to do it simultaneously, you just have to get one and then the other, Attacking both sides sometimes reduces how much wiggle room you can get out of the shackle. Without a lot of extra room for movement, another steel shim opposite an existing steel shim sometimes runs you into trouble. Simple homebrew aluminum shims always are going to fit in there. Now whether they're going to survive the process, that always remains to be seen. This one doesn't seem like it's reaching down quite far enough. I'm not feeling a lot of resistance there. This one has clearly run into something on this side. Nope. I'm going to have to go ahead and try to make a slightly deeper one for this side. Again, if you ever get a shim that starts to crumple, starts to jam on you, just get it out of there. No sense wasting your time and accidentally leaving chunks of metal inside the lock that's just going to make the attempt harder. Drink another beer. Make yourself another one. Here's our, our fake Budweiser from the Czech Republic.
Sorry, copyright infringement is not an issue just affecting Hollywood films. I'm going to try to make this one a little longer and a little deeper. Not a perfect design, but could be good enough for our purposes. Let's see if that can reach in there where we want it to. That feels a lot tighter now. <clears throat> there we go. There we go. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Now one other interesting tip I'll give you with respect to padlock shims is making homebrew shims on the fly not always the easiest thing to do. If you don't have a pair of scissors on you, I mean you should be a responsible hacker, you should have a Leatherman tool or something else always on you, but in the off chance that you don't, something I like to do, in my wallet, Underneath the little panel with all the photos and everything else, I have some extra goodies that I usually keep with me. In addition to some reserve keys, a flash drive, my spare SIM cards, I also keep in this pocket pre-cut metal M's. Now, these will fold flat, obviously. They'll stay unobtrusively out of the way. The moment you need them, go ahead and fold them into shape. They're ready to go. But until you need to use one, Easily stored, easily kept where you want it. Really, really nice thing to have around. I can't count the number of times I've been on some kind of audit or assessment job, and I've wanted to prove to someone that their locks were bad. Didn't have to play around pulling my knife out, cutting up a can, buying a soda from down the hall. Reach right in, pull it out. Really, really useful thing to have. Keep it in your wallet.